The Celtic Exchange A fresh insight on Celtic Football Club Ange Postacoglu doesn't believe in hoodoos and with the help of Dyson Maeda, James Forrest and a few others he managed to put any Tony Macaroni based fears to the side as Celtic blew Livy away with a solid 3-1 win at the weekend. It leaves Celtic top of the Scottish Premiership with just 8 games remaining as the Australian looks to win back the title at the first time of asking. This is episode 60 of the Celtic Exchange Weekly, this is Tino and this week I'm joined by Miff and Paddy to cover all things Celtic. Miff, you made your debut at the Tony Macaroni on Sunday so that's you 1-1 from 1, 100% record. Yes. Uh, we can't ask any more of that from <laughs> no, you. No, no, uh, regarded by the bus as a bit of a lucky charm. Uh, hello, Tino. Hello, Paddy. Hello, guys. Um, yes, delighted. Absolutely delighted. And what a way to do it. I think not only did we win, we played very well and it's as well as we've played in, in recent weeks. There was a bit of a dip after the Motherwell game. It was, you know, a point of discussion on the, on the podcast for a few weeks. But um, rather than blindly panic... Uh, the fans turned up in their numbers, supported the team. The way that Levy allocate the tickets means it's very much like a home game. <laughs> it certainly felt like that. Right. <laughs> um, great atmosphere, beautiful day, Celtic winning, dominating the game. What's not to love? What is not to love? Uh, Paddy, you were also there on Sunday. Uh, cheers for the invite, lads. <laughs> um, what did you make of the performance? I well, That's the, the so-called hoodoo that the spaghetti had out the window now. So it's um, just... Great for us just to kind of push on uh, with this season. Um, and, you know, a lot of people were saying that, that, that yesterday was probably the biggest of the season so far. Um, I'm just glad that we kind of put to bed the fact that we know we're a better team than Livingston. And we just outplayed them yesterday. Um, and it was very comfortable for us. So, yeah, very, very happy with the three points. But still a long way to go. Yeah, definitely. Go on, you go I would say we overwhelmed them. Oh, I like it. I like it. Yep, very nice. Yep. Uh, you're all in business mode, mode Muff, I see. Yes, straight, straight, <laughs> for work, straight for work, hence why the togs are on tonight, folks. <laughs> and words like overwhelmed. And you may actually think right. to yourself, God, is that how you go to work, I think, but it is. So. <laughs> um, Paddy, you say so-called hoodoo, but there's no doubt it's a ground we've struggled at um, in recent times. So Sunday was the first time we'd beat Levy in five games, or at least away from home in five games. That was three draws and two defeats in those five games. Obviously, um, there's further stats about we've not actually beaten them since 2007, but Levy were outside the league at that uh, yeah. for a long the, period of time. They've also proved a pesky opponent at home at times as well, though, to be fair. They're, they're just one of those teams that are just difficult to beat, but they've been, they've been flying, you know, credit yeah. to them. Mm-hmm. They are a sticky team, no doubt. I mean, do you know the, the goal scorers and the result the last time we beat them in 2007? Have you seen this? Did Ryardon score? Yep. Ryardon got two, uh, either side of a Darno Day goal and a Jan Venegar of Hesslink goal. So oh, <laughs> yeah, long ago. Happy days. It was also Paul bad. Hartley's Paul Hartley's debut at that time. Oh, I remember those days well. That's been lovely. Seasons. Used to go to the games. In the sauce in your that, that was, I used to go to the games in the sauce and that pre pre marriage pre kids. <laughs> We swally for the Celtic game. <laughs> days are long gone. That's long gone. Yeah. So obviously, you know, we've had our challenges there. Fifty minutes in, Muff, we get a penalty. We had the post. Were you thinking it was going to be one of those days? I was behind that particular goal. Didn't think it was a penalty. I've not seen it back yet. Um, I thought it was a very harsh award. Yeah. Um, but happy with it. You think it was a penalty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy threw himself into the tackle and kept his arm out. I say I. Yeah. I, 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 I. It looks planted. Obviously, when, when, when it hits his arm, it's planted onto the ground. But he's come off the ground and slid into it. It's a definite handball. He made himself bigger. To me, it just looked like, you know, it's happened while he's been on the ground. That was just was what I thought at the game. But, um, I was trying to hold up a five-year-old at the time so that he could get a better vantage point, so please forgive me if I called it wrong. That's fine. Um, but yes, uh, I thought, here we go, it's just it's just one of these things. I, I mean, McGregor, is that the second penalty McGregor's missed this season? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Calmack, you're playing Wilson, just don't bother again. Just what, don't bother. What his header just after the penalty? Oh, that was even worse. That was yeah. even worse. All, all after I tweeted on Friday night saying it was going to be McGregor's game. Did because you never heard <laughs> of the last However, time. I'm like, what are you doing, Callum? <laughs> However... He, he, he was like the rest of the team I thought in general he was excellent but if you miss Aye. a penalty and miss a sitter you've probably known your best game but um, no I, yeah, poor poor I, I, I don't know with Juranovic being the bench Xhaka Marcus, the preferred penalty taker also being on the bench <laughs> <clears throat> um, probably who who would it be is it, is it who would, you'd be thinking well he's got history, history putting him yeah. out of the bar yeah, um, 2016 
Greg Taylor for me, bro. Yeah, <laughs> right, that's playing <laughs> We'll oh, move swiftly move on. on. Move on no. now. Um, but yeah, so obviously you're, you're in your 15 odd minutes in. We miss the penalty. McGregor misses a big chance after that. You're thinking, you know, was it going to be one of those days? But very, very quickly, Dyes Maida's scored the opener, Paddy. Yeah. I, I mean, it, again, just one of those ones. It's just good instinct from him to be in that position as well. He's followed in after the, the attempt from Starfelt and a great header for Starfelt as well. It was actually a really good save. Um, so. Yeah, a, a really good goal and um, a deserved goal. Um, I've not seen, I, I'm, I'm going back, see, just not going back on the penalty, but see just the, the, the discussion of it, of whether it's a handball. I'm looking at some of the discussions last night in sports scene. Some of them are crazy, just um, regarding the fact they didn't think it was a penalty either because his hand was planted. But as I said, he's dived into it. Who but, was the sports scene <laughs> panel? <laughs> It was Stephen Thompson, Kenny Miller and Richard Foster. So, okay, thanks for yeah, that. Yep. Nah, that's all you need to kind of say on that. But they also replayed the corner that was awarded four times to show that it wasn't a corner. Mm -hmm. And it was all, I pretty much saw the same camera angle they showed as well. Just getting the point across as well. It's just one of those nights in sports scene that kind of really annoyed me though. Um, yeah, it's not a corner, but I mean, how many times do you see that happen to us? Like, and sorry, who were the studio guests again? <laughs> I think if you're ever unsure if Celtic are top of the league or not, all you need to do is look at the fallout on a Monday yeah. as to the, the decisions. You know, there's some kind of run of the mill things, corner maybe, corner not and stuff. And they're running, you know, full scale inquiries. Mm -hmm. You know, real, I mean, the, at one point in sports scene, they've put up the, what do they call it? Is it the IFAB rules? Yeah, you know, yeah the, the for, a, for a handball. If you've noticed about handball and the, the, you know, the definition of what is and what isn't a handball. I mean, geese peace, lads. You know, uh, this is kind of run of the mill football stuff. Some you get, some you don't. And it's... High drama. It's still it, like well, that, that rule coming up though. It still for me mm. doesn't take away for the fact that the boy ha has been on the deck, right? But he's raised his body in order to try and block any other cross, and in doing so, he's had to bring his arm up again and plant it again. So he's he's, he's made himself bigger. So mm. it's a definite handball. For I me. think Paddy's been more technical than I for rules. If I'm being perfectly yeah. honest here, I'm if ready. You're, <laughs> if you're uh, ready for us tonight, he's been he's done his prep. If I you're mean, upset at that one, uh, Levy fans, what about the one where Tom Rogic catches the ball in the middle of the park and runs a full 10 yards with it before laying it down and passing it into Less, less than, less than <laughs> a yard away from him, yeah. it's hit off him. It's madness, so Aye. going to skip by the decisions quite rightfully so. Yep. Um, Miff, back to Maeda, so real strikers finish, you know, he's shown some real instinct there to, you know, peel away at the back post and just nod at home. There's been a fair bit of chat on him, a bit of criticism, how do you think he fared? I, th I thought, he, again, he seems to want to do everything, everything in a rush. Um, Sometimes he tries to do everything first time when he could just take a wee touch, mm -hmm. but I think it's just the way it's just the way that he plays clearly. But if he just showed a wee bit more composure, I think he'd have a lot more to offer. But that said, what great, phenomenal. Um, just very quickly before we go on further, in Maida, guess which um, Celtic Exchange podcast member had two pound on Starfield first goal at twenty five to one. That wasn't me, Sinky. That was me. <laughs> um, what a save. It's a great save. <laughs> Arrow went uh, right into the bottom uh, corner. Great save. Um, but Maeda on, on the spot. And I think fans always have an issue with a goal scorer when they don't maybe do much else. Mm -hmm. And their link up play isn't maybe the sharpest. You know, not everybody's going to be, say, a Henry Larson, a Moussa Dembele, a Gary Hooper. There will be players who just score goals. Yeah. And Maeda looks like he's going to be one of them, albeit that he's very fast and he works hard. That'll do for me. You know, I'm, I'm not expecting everybody to be a Furuhashi, everybody to be a Moussa Dembele. Mm -hmm. If he gets the ball, you know, and he works hard to shut the ball down up front and he puts the ball in the back of the net, if he's that type of player, yeah. we, or quite often fans moan about the fact we've not got a goal scorer, Aye. then we get one and we moan about the things he doesn't do. For me, the guy's stats stack up. What I see with my eyes is a guy that works very hard. Yes, he's a bit rough around the edges and other parts he's played but he'll do for me he's also extremely important in terms of how Ange sets up Paddy so you you know you know all about the high press that he he likes his teams to do and I think guys like Maeda are, are, are central to all of that and I think by and large since he's come in you know obviously he and the other lads come in in January when available he starts games for Ange it's more now to the point where actually hearing um, something for Jackie McNamara um, talking about him and <clears throat> He's not saying he's he's like Larson, um, but what he was saying is that some of his movement off the ball is very Larson-esque in the sense that he knows how to read the game, he knows to be in those right positions, and that's just a clever te like a, a clever player being able to just to know how to read the game, how to get in behind the defenders. I've noticed that a lot from him lately. I, I would say, see when you're at the games and you see the movement mm -hmm. that he makes, it's a totally it puts a totally different yeah kind of it gives you a different view of it. it it's just 
Aye, you can see he's, he's pulling up. He's away and made a run, pulled up. He's back. Yeah. He's making another run. By the time the ball actually gets to him, one of the things you said though, just just um, before coming on to this, is about he's maybe just too quick and he's um, and and try to play players through or try to knock the yep. ball on. I'd really like to see him alongside Kyogo because if you remember right when Kyogo was starting to hit, hit a bit of form when he first mm -hmm. started, we well, were all talking about we're missing that player that's quick enough for him to get the ball through yeah. quick enough to him. And I wonder if that's what we're possibly going to see down the line. And it would be interesting if we do get that, it'd be brilliant. Yeah. Just on the point you made as well, he almost scored a goal of the season candidate with the, the move that the team produced. Yeah. It was kind of like one touch football and he's just tried to go for the near post and the keeper stuck a leg out. I think he'd also a fairly a notable contribution to Forest goal as well. I mm -hmm. think he played quite a, quite a pick quick pass for that so uh, Maeda again I said that about um, what was the game was it the, the Dundee game if, uh, the St Martin game if you looked at the performance and thought Maeda was the issue I, I, I yeah. don't know what game yeah. you're watching likewise yesterday he's popped up in the goal line where a striker should be mm -hmm. and there's a rebound um, he's contributed massively to the, the, the team's performance so Aye, thumbs up for me. Yeah absolutely so I mean let's look at the team lineup as well so obviously um, Maeda included it's fair to say Angie's team selection raised a few eyebrows. Mm -hmm. So Maeda starts, and everyone is banging the drum for Jack and Marcus. You know, we, we spoke about it over the last couple of weeks, even. You know, we're all kind of, we had one eye in this Levy game as yeah. the potential banana skin. And everyone was, I think you quoted me if somebody said that Jack and Marcus was almost purpose built for yes. such a game, you yes. know, something like that. Uh, lo and behold, he starts from the bench, you know, to everyone's surprise. Ralston also starts instead of Juranovic. Beaton comes in effectively instead of Hatati to allow McGregor. You know, to move up to good effect further up the midfield and James Forrest is in instead of a badder. You could question all of them mm -hmm. and I'm sure a lot of us did pre-match. Banjo's right. Well, I mean, Raul Stanovic was, was excellent um, and he justified his selection. The aggression that he showed is what you need to match Livy in those, those situations. Um, Forrest, I thought, was really bright when he came on against St Mern and he's just continued that, that form on and I think that's really important for us because a confident and fit James Forrest is a huge asset for us. Of course it is. Especially yeah. when he's an experienced senior member of the squad going into, you know, a really tight, um, nervy part of the season. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me that's a that's a massive thing. Forrest coming back, finding a bit of form and finding a bit of confidence. Mm -hmm. I was delighted, really delighted for him yesterday. Um he, he's always been a bit of a target by a, a section of support. Um but you just look at what he's achieved and what he's done for the club. Um, I'm specifically talking to you there, Tino. Um, so you can <laughs> I hear see, you, brother. You know, you, you can you can see that. Uh, for me, it was just vitally important. He contributed yesterday, and he did. Um, the, the other selections, Jack and Marcus coming back from injury. I think we would all have liked him to have played, but I can understand why why he didn't. You know, pitch opponents, all those types of things. Um, but. Maeda again, you know, doing the business. He, he proved he proved the right selection. Yeah, just you know, going back to James Forrest very briefly. So you'll have heard the stat, but that's him now scored in thirteen straight league seasons. Thirteen seasons, that is phenomenal. Yeah. And you know, he's got his detractors, Miff, and I may or may not be one of them at certain times. But you cannot argue with that, Paddy. It's phenomenal stats. And if he's found form, he's found it at the right time, hasn't he? Absolutely. I think um, it was John McGinley on Twitter. Uh, Twitter made a very good, um, very good statement about it. Just the fact that. He did look very bright, I thought, against uh, St Mirren during the week. And, you know, if you're going to difficult places like it is yesterday, your manager's possibly having that, a, a bit of a dilemma in who he starts. Because Abad is an incredible start to um, life at Celtic. And I just think that he's, especially since I went to break, Abad has been one of our best players. Um, so to kind of say, do you know what? I still think that Abad is going to be the main the main player in that position but I want to keep Forrest on his toes um, and I want to keep a bad on his toes and just and give him that game and he, he grabbed it he grabbed the opportunity yesterday I thought mm. a lot of people are saying he's great in the second half I thought see he's working the first half um, he has ball in to Ralston I think it was Ralston to win to win that corner yeah, obviously it was yeah it to was. win the corner it's just that's Forrest of old, just looking, I'm not going to be able to take this player on, I don't need to, I've got the runner there, and it's just the outside of the boot, perfect pass, perfect weight, enough for Ralston to take the touch. Um, I just thought yesterday he was all over that that front line as well, he wasn't just in the right the right wing position, any corner we got on the left hand side that was given by Jota, 
Forrest was coming over to try and meet and see if they could take the, the short one, which they've, they've been enjoying doing lately. Um, no, I thought he had a great first half as well as the second. He, he nearly got in as well. He tried to yeah. take it in his chest and he just kind of stumbled. I actually thought he was maybe going to go off after ah. that. But mm -hmm. uh, just, he was everywhere. Uh, he was. Yeah. Aside from Forrest, you know, obviously coming in for a badder, as Paddy mentions, Miff. Angie's clearly gone for some physicality. You know, Ralston yeah. certainly gives you more of that than Juranovic. Very different types of players. Juranovic, far more a ball player. Definitely a penalty kick taker as well. Um, but uh, Ralston's clearly got that physicality. He's also brought in Beaton, maybe for a couple of reasons. One, it does allow McGregor to move forward. Mm -hmm. And two, it gives him that height and physicality. How do you think that impacted the game? It impacted well. I mean, Beaton's Beaton, he gives you what he gives you, but he was sleeping for that header um, just right before half time. So you yeah. can say it's worked in, in some ways, but it was almost very costly because yeah. that would have had us get in at 1 1, which would have been absolutely criminal mm -hmm. the way we'd played in the first half. So that is Beaton. That's what he gives right. you. He gives you probably 90% of absolute class. He knows a great player, but there's that 10% of absolute muck that he can throw up yeah. no, time I, to time I, as I, well. No, it is, but I mean, yeah. you know. He, he, he continually seems to find a way to let us down after a period of, of looking like a really good player so yeah. we, we beat on that's just what it is he's going to get played because Ange trusts him that's fine but you know th there will be the odd mistake in there and we just need to love it yeah and what do you make of that Paddy so Miff mentions the chance you, you'll know the one just on mm -hmm. half time where Obelai's cracked the bar he's also had a, a chance early bells actually yeah. nothing each but uh, Joe Hart's made a decent yeah, save um, and then the goal we've conceded and that's frustrating isn't it you go 3 and all up you're Absolutely cruising and then immediately, and we've done it a couple of times now this season, yeah. immediately after you can see the goal. If you look at it, you know, fairly closely, you'll see that the flick on is from Fitzwater, Jack Fitzwater, six foot two. Who's he up against, Smith? I'll put you at your GT3. Misery. Greg Taylor 3, GT3, height 5'7", right? Yeah. Now that's just a basic, you know, I understand zonal marking at corners and different things, but if you see this six foot two monster steering up at a corner... Surely you put one of our big guys on him. Forgive me again, because we were still bouncing about for the third goal and I had to be, again, the new man on my shoulders. Um, the, 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 my two boys actually didn't believe me that Levy had scored because there was no discernible <laughs> yeah, no difference in the, in the Celtic <laughs> end, but everybody was still jumping up and down. Yeah. And I'm like, no, it's 3-1. Um, but I thought Hart looked quite slow for the yeah, rebound. I agree. Would, would that... That's how I felt at the game. I'm like, why is he not just saved that? It just my it feeling on that. So obviously, you lads are there. Thanks again for the invite. My feeling on that <laughs> whoa, was whoa, whoa. Leverkusen. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, you've got me there. Um, once you lose that flick on, once Fitzwater flicks it in a dangerous area, mm -hmm. it's then a bit of a mix between Carla Vickers. I think can do a wee bit better. Yeah. I also think Ralston can do a wee bit better. And in terms of the goalie, you lads clearly have your thoughts on it. But the guy prods at home for about three yards out. I'm not too sure if the goalie can or cannot be there do you think he's, he should be coming for it Paddy? it felt as if Hart was down already before the shot was even hit though that's yeah. a kind of what I think you're meaning in that sense he's kind of committed to a shot almost being hit before it's happened um, I, I wouldn't put all the blame on Hart um, it shouldn't it shouldn't reach that position in the first place but um, I mean for me it's just we have been guilty of that a few times this season it's switching off when we think the job's done um, and at, at no point did Livingston really like, worry me. I, I know they had the one off the. Um, I know they had their two chances, uh, the safety heart, and I know they had the one off the crossbar. But other than that, I, I, we nullified anything that they were really they were really trying to do against us. Um, so they've switched off. They've thought the game is done. They just need to be a bit sharper there, and they'll learn. In fairness to Hart, he's probably think as maybe what pellets are murder. See me get done, and you're sweating, and <laughs> that. you get to say you know you're point sevens or point fives. You you Ah, oh, no, nah, you're all right, lads. I'll give you a goal, just a wee go. Fair enough. Uh, what about the win itself? We've kind of glossed over the, the actual goal. So, obviously, James Forrest with a big contribution. It's actually very uh, Ange like in terms of how how hard we've pressed and harried to win the ball back in the first place. Very quickly, they've played any Jota. He looked a bit more like himself as yes, well. You know, it's, it's worth commenting on that. But yeah. he's just turned and played it, you know, almost immediately on the path of James Forrest. Great by Jota, great run by Forrest. And overall, a really good goal. He took probably the best part of about 10 minutes to realise he was going to have the better at Devlin for 90. Mm -hmm. And um, he was he was outstanding yesterday, Jota. Uh, very effective. He's crossing. I remember he's crossing the first game at the, the Tony Macaroni. He was, was woeful. He was putting it far too high. And uh, Obelaya was winning every ball. Uh, whereas yesterday it was a lot more direct, a lot more to the byline from both sides actually. Ralston was very good at it too, um, and uh, as well as Forrest to an extent. Um, but I thought Jota yesterday was outstanding and just beating that man, getting a good ball in. We, I, I was saying this to the guys yesterday on the way home, 
that game is on a faster part on grass. That's six none uh, yesterday for me. We could have scored a lot more. Um, the ball holds up so much more, and on on a part like that, and it's also drier yesterday too. I just felt that yesterday we gave a hundred and ten percent. We we ran ourselves into the ground to make sure that we were winning every single ball. We were making sure every pass was was effectively completed as well. Um, we were relentless yesterday. I thought we were great. Yeah. yeah. What do you think of Jota yesterday? I, I thought it was magic and it was great. Um, in the first half, the, the goal that we were behind, being so close to the action, you can just see how quick he's feel. Aye. And touch the as touch well. the t- he was just sucking Devlin in and just moving the ball either side. He was going in and out. It was it was just brilliant to watch. It, it, there's nothing better than a, a winger full of confidence Aye. taking guys on. It's yeah. just brilliant. It's, you know that, that in terms of football, it's just brilliant to watch. And his delivery it was really on point yesterday. If you've got that Jota again coming into the stage of the season we're at, mm-hmm. if if he's going to be playing like that and he's going to be thriving with that confidence, that's what we saw at the start of the season. It bodes very well if you've got Forrest and Jota in that form on either wing. Yeah, you, you mentioned there so Forrest and Jota. Extremely important to have these guys top of their game for the you know the remaining eight games, Barry. Mm-hmm. What do you think overall? So you know, looking beyond those two and, and into the rest of the squad, what do you think overall? A one like that does for confidence because like at a lump it, who do, no who do, whatever, this was pre and all that stuff. It was definitely there. It was definitely in the players' minds. Um I was watching at home and Carter Vickers was interviewed before the game and he was asked about it. And you know, it's it's something they've talked about so that you know it wasn't something that fans only spoke about and players ignored. Mm-hmm. It's definitely something that's been hovering around and to put it to bed and to put it to bed so emphatically, you know, it's got to be a big plus for the, the feel good around the camp. Well they know they can beat every team in the league now. That's it. And that's what you just take forward going into the rest of the season. Is you can beat every team on your day. If you play the better than them, you're going to win. Yeah. That, that's it. You feel a bit confidence coursing through that squad, Muff? Well, I think in relation to the, the fixture at Livingston, the players are only human. You know, they, 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 you're obviously going to talk about it and think, or even in the negative, I hate going to that place. I hate that part. Um, if you go, it's an extra motivation if you can be the squad that wins the three points, you know, you're not going to get any trophy for it, you're probably not going to go down, <laughs> down in history for it, you know, beating Livy at their, their home park, it should be something that is seen as running the milk to Celtic, but it hasn't been, that's the point, it hasn't been, and better, or perceived better teams in Celtic's history have struggled there as well. Mm-hmm. So, to just go and do it, psychologically, it's a big lift, but I think the most important thing for me, obviously three points are important, and there's no getting away for that, it was the level of performance, ah. the level of performance was back to where we expect it yep. to be, and is more like Angie's Celtic that we've become accustomed to over the past 20 odd games maybe they'll you know, save the last three or four which have been a bit more um, a bit more less like us so that, I think that was the most important thing for me not only just getting the points I dare say that there have been a few um, thirsty bears tuning in <laughs> with their six cans <laughs> lunchtime start you know expecting to see his dropping points yep. I think that was very quickly nullified by the by the way that we started playing. You could just tell that the players had decided no, not today. Yeah, Paddy, what do you think of the the added bonus? So obviously, squad rotation, you know, utilised pretty effectively by Ange. The added bonus that guys like Juranovic, they offer him Hatati, very short run out, Abada, Jack, and Marcus O'Reilly getting very you know short cameos on yeah. the day. It's good use of the squad, isn't it? And it'll, it'll benefit us moving forward. Entirely. And he's in the, the 11 that's come in yesterday, and I'm including the likes of Beaton, uh, Ralston and Forrest. He's tr- trusted those players for that type of game. Um, absolutely. Like you were mentioning there, it's more of a physical game, but the, the aggression shown by every single player yesterday to win the ball back when it was lost, to make sure, like I say, the pass is completed on a surface like that, because sometimes it holds up. And just... All in all, their general play yesterday was outstanding. And again, that gives food for thought for those that are sitting on the bench, like, I need to be on my toes to make sure that I, I can back into this lineup. Although I know he does rotate it uh, well enough, but one of the questions the guys were all talking about yesterday is see games like that, where it's a case of, you know, we, we are pushing for the attack. Is Ralston your better option in that sense? Uh, I, I think Juranovic has been outstanding for us. I'm not taking anything away from him. I think Juranovic is a better defender, though than Ralston. Um so I'm thinking something along the lines of on the attacking sense I think they're much of a muchness though I, I, like the, the deliveries from Ralston in the past few games he's played in have been outstanding Yeah, and I'm just wondering how does he kind of continue to rotate that or is that just what he's going to do for the remainder of the season I think uh, Ralston's assists are probably better than Juranovic and I'll tell yeah. you all you need to know he, he, you know I think just looking at the two of his footballers I think Juranovic 
Iranovic is clearly a better footballer. But Ralston is so effective. You know, he brings so much to the game and the way he powers forward. Added that in the mix, he absolutely loves it. Ah, he does. I, I posted a video on Twitter this afternoon. It was just the, the unique angle video from the first goal. And he's all about oh, it. And, I, and he's he right up in the oh, crowd. I, and geez, he gives us everything. He absolutely loves it. 100%. And he's playing with his heart there. Absolutely. You know he is. Um, one of the things going on that, though, with the assists, is uh, one of the guys actually pointed out yesterday what Ralston's likely to do. And he's comfortable in doing it because he's, he's stronger than most, most defenders he's coming up against is that he's happy to go to the byline for that cross. And I think you maybe missed that with Juranovic. I think he'll maybe try and put it in before he hits hits yep. the, the last man and, mm -hmm. and the crosses in. You know, the strikers might not have kept up with the play by that point. Whereas if you're getting the ball in and you've got players still running in, more chances for me, or more chances for them to score in my opinion. Um, I don't know. I, I, it's caused me a lot, of, a lot of thinking in the last twenty four hours. Some sleepless nights. Some sleepless so nights. Right <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. but um, it's a great position to be in. It's a good headache to have. It really is. So last week, my fit was Ange out. This week, it's Juranovic out. Controversial. <laughs> it certainly is. Um, it's it's just a such a peculiar problem, an unexpected problem to <laughs> totally have. Totally high. Aye. I, I, I still can't believe I'm watching the same player. I'd love to have that problem at left back. I do still think it's an issue for us. And I know we talk, we've spoken a lot in this show about Greg do Taylor. You know? And I think he's <laughs> fairly effective domestically. Yep. I'll, I'll give it that. But yep. I think if we're going to move forward and improve as a team, that is an area Damned to Damned by on. faint praise. Fairly effective at domestic level. Reasonably no bad at That's domestic level. an international level. left back you're talking about. Yeah. He's an international right. left back. International sub. Anyway, all in all, good day to Tony Macaroni, so yep. let's move on from that one. Um, before we move on to our next section, I want to give everyone a short reminder that we're still running our competition to win a signed and framed treble treble shirt, complete with Scottish Premiership Winners Medal. It's a brilliant prize and you can see some pictures and video of it across our social media pages. Uh, we've also included a link in the, to the competition in the show notes for this episode. And for just five pound you could be in with a chance of winning a prize which is easily worth a few grand uh, and maybe even more so check it out and good luck to everyone who enters you want something to say Miff? Uh, no no, we, we no, no I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just poised. I'm just poised poised I like it poised. also while we're at it I also want to give a shout out to Kieran Owens who turns 18 this week on Tuesday 8th of March Kieran's dad Stevie is a good friend of the show so happy birthday Kieran have a good one whenever it comes Miff, I feel a wee bit like Tiger Sum here doing, <laughs> doing the shout outs back Kieran, in the day happy birthday, birthday mate Cheers lads uh, Miff can you remember what you were doing on your 18th? Uh, yes I certainly can I was by the way remarkably this was not pre-agreed I was wearing a yellow yellow yellow, yellow yep. Tommy Hilfiger uh, shirt a pair of cream cords <laughs> uh, a pair of it might have been a pair of pods or kicker shoes heading up to bar one in Motherwell which is now a Tony Macaroni <sighs> that not? the irony um, life has come full circle drinking pints of diesel getting knocked back from Plenty Birds so there we go here, here, that could be you <laughs> more things change the more they stay the same absolutely like a young man <laughs> are you getting the memories of your 18th? no it's only a few years ago for a young man like you uh, absolutely not it's about 15 mate fair enough <laughs> okay so only one but yep all the best Kieran when it comes so um, moving back to the, the title race in general you know obviously we've got that uh, victory against St Murray during the week as well so 2-0 fairly comfy if uninspiring performance goals from Carter Vickers and Callum McGregor um, but that in addition to the Livingston result ensures it's now 9 wins and just one draw, the Hibs draw away in the 10 games since we came back from the winter break. It's really solid form. Excellent form in the summer game is a, a nice reminder of how much I can stand that with Robert Robinson jumping about in the side of the park. I, it just takes me back to that game where they scored for the throw-in. And he was, oh, oh, he's just a young lad, you know, at CU. Bolt. Yeah. <laughs> um, but one thing he does know how to do is organise a team to come to Celtic Park. They're always fairly difficult to, to break down. It was the same when he was at Motherwell. And St Mirren, you know, they were so rigid in their defensive front, probably more so than it. I, I thought Ross County at the start of the season was bad. I thought Dundee United was bad. I thought Livingston was bad. Aye. But I think St Mirren showed the least attacking endeavour of any team that's been at Celtic Park. They just refused to come out completely. Yeah. yeah. That'd be a strange one for them, I think, as well, under Robinson, because. Goodwin had them actually playing some all right football, mm -hmm. like some decent football, and and even against us at points, you know. I think, um, I think so. they missed the boy McGrath. He was a he was a class uh, player. very uh, good. Player. He was a class player. Yeah, I mean, Pat, there was a lot of chat 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 after the game about the fact that what what you're what, right what, what? Uh -huh. say that again, um, but a lot of chat about how you, we didn't play particularly well, and actually we've started a wee bit in the last few games. Obviously, we've had the draw Hibs. 
But, you know, smarter folk than us and guys like Chris Sutton who have been there and done that, you know, they've all suggested that if you go and win a title race, you don't have 38 brilliant performances. No. It's just not natural, like, even under Rogers' that, Invincible stuff. Yeah. I was just going to say that. I yeah, can remember Sviatchenko 1-0, like, Ross County. Aye, oh, aye. I mean, Partick Thistle as well, 1-0. It was, it was, there was some, yeah. some fair like in a grim games. I read, I read a good way to look at it. You take those two goals in the first half and have a second half performance. That, that it was quite drab in the, like the way it was in the first you, you go home like, I got the job done I think we just got the job done last yeah. Wednesday I'm happy yeah. with that it was yeah. okay and you're definitely getting to a stage in the season where it, it really I mean cliche cliche but really is all about the three points isn't it it is, it is I, and I, I think these these players know that now and as I say to you like um, what we're kind of talking about is and slightly stubborn with um, you know continual like Lineup selections for obviously what we've seen in the second leg against uh, Bodo Glimt when he continued to play um, Rogic and O'Reilly. Yeah. We've all also said that that's something that could possibly work domestically as well, but it didn't work for those games. But he wanted to try it again. For me, I just think he wants to keep every single part of that squad on their toes, ready to fill in. Because after the Rafe Rovers game, there was a few that hadn't played for a while. And they didn't look entirely interested. I know we won the game quite comfortably, but they didn't look entirely interested for the 90 minutes. And that's what he wants. He wants that 90 minute professional. Um, and I, I tell you something, as comfortable as yesterday was, that goal won't go down easy, won't go down well in the changing room. I mm -hmm. think it'll be something that will just be like, we need to be switched on for 90 minutes every single game going in this running. Yeah, I think you make a great point there, Paddy, as well, in terms of nobody can rest easy in terms of their place being guaranteed. I yeah. think what Ange has got is a, there's a genuine general spine of the team where Joe Hart, you know, will always start games. Mm -hmm. Carter Vickers and Starfelt, you know, more often than not, and McGregor. That aside, it's all up for grabs. Yeah. He changes his fullbacks, he changes his midfield wide guys, and he changes his front three. And I don't think anybody in that dressing room can say, I've had a couple of decent games here, I'm having a no bad season, and I'm a shoe in for the next game. No, and I think that's the way it should be. Um, you know, McGregor and Hart are, are the senior players. And you're, you're, I think Angie's been on record a good few times saying he doesn't like messing about with the centre half no. partnership. Um, everybody's been anxious to get Julian back in to see what he could offer, but. I don't think we're at that time in the season where Same. You, you mess about with that if the, the centre halves are battle hardened and they've got a, a decent partnership on the go then I think you stick with that um, I think the most surprising thing for me I know set pieces are still seem to be a wee bit an Achilles heel not just for the goals we've conceded but the chances we're, we're, we're conceding for, for set pieces if that's the right thing to say mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but the general you would think a team that's so focused on attack would leak more chances we, we don't really you know the, def the, the defensive structure of the team seems to be really good that's for the attack in, in midfield as well and I do think that stems for the likes of Maeda and how hard and even Abad as well how hard they work off the ball yeah. um, when, when they're shutting down it's just, uh, the word you used earlier Paddy was relentless and mm -hmm. I think that's exactly what it's like <clears throat> excuse me Excuse me, just I was glad. Excuse you, indeed. <laughs> um, excuse me, was the full stop? So. Excuse me, fair enough. Um, Paddy, I, couldn't, I couldn't get my pitch and tone down there because I was struggling. So, got you. <laughs> Paddy, we've not lost a league game since that Livingston away result uh, back in the 19th of September, long time ago, mm -hmm. uh, 24 games ago to be exact. And since then, we've won 28 and drawn four league games. That now leaves us, as we all know, three points clear at the top of the table, 11 goals ahead now. So, we've managed to increase that over the weekend with just eight games left to play. Um, Miff, I'll come to you first as a slightly more cautious one uh, in the team here. How do you feel about that at this stage? How do I feel about it? Um, I'm, I'm absolutely delighted, if I'm being honest. Uh, didn't think I didn't think this is where we'd be. I didn't. Um, <laughs> within ten points at Christmas, I think was my that was my sunny outlook. Yeah. Um, so, but but that I know that looks stupid now, but that was with good reason. Um, think the, the way that things have, have swung in our favour over the festive period, the reinforcements we've brought in, and also, let's be quite frank about it, Rangers form tailing off, you know, that that's a huge contributory factor. So I am I'm I remain well I'm optimistic obviously. I'm I'm, I'm optimistic. I don't I don't say that um you know, just just for the sake of it, just because I'm, I'm on this podcast, I'm optimistic we'll win the league because we've given ourselves the chance to do it. That's why. Yeah. You know, we've put, we've put ourselves in this position. So, um, that run of games that you mentioned there, you know, there was a bit of hysteria after John Lee Hibbs. Much like, like Levinson, our, our record that Easter Road in the league isn't, he, isn't he tremendous either. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we did win there at the start of the season, but overall, you, you know, it tends to be a, a ground that we do drop points in most seasons. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I think you just need to 
just need to take each game as it comes, as Ange, Ange says. I think the team, the, the squad's got a bit of depth to it. Everybody seems to know their role. We've bounced back to form in terms of level of performance. I think we just approach these games looking to win them all, and that puts everything to bed. Yeah. Paddy, there's a, a fine line between being optimistic, as my is, and being wholly confident. Where do you sit on things? Um, probably just in between that as well. I, I, th- I think it's... Uh, I think given everything that we've we've put into this season, um, it would be it would be really sad if we didn't go and and, and do this. Very, very, very sad. Very sad. Very upsetting. No, I, I just think it's been a, such a strong performance from us this year. Um, considering everything we've been we've been up against with uh, having to rebuild a team, but what we've done is we've went out and made a statement with the players we brought in in, in August, and then continued to bolster that team uh, in January. I think that's going to be the difference this season. I really do. I think our depth is is starting to show, but I still don't even think we're settled yet. I, I still don't think those players that have come in in January are fully settled in. So mm. what's it going to be like when they are? And I just think that now that we're coming into a period where we're actually going to have a bit of time in between games, um, we're also now, I think, we play before them every weekend up and before the split as well. That goes in our favour as well, in my opinion. I just think that now is the time just to hone in and just go for it and and you know the time on the training the training ground is just going to help us massively like James was saying last week mm-hmm. it's definitely in our hands yeah 100% I think it also shows you how important an effective January transfer window can be too yeah. often Celtic kind of tickle the January transfer window and bring in a, a lone guy here and there at the end John Joe Kenny my goodness oh, don't <laughs> uh, you still buy his sign boot at the club shop by the way I just know, to let know. everyone know there I've seen, um, him, I've seen him playing against Boreham Wood um, actually not a bad game but against I would, ar- would argue that's his level but, anyway. yeah. <laughs> but you can see the impact you know Maeda you know Sunday being the most recent example Hatati huge impact in the Rangers game and mm-hmm. the Hearts game O'Reilly showing some class here and there um, Gucci you know still to see remains to be seen yeah. and the young uh, Johnny Kenny we'll see how he fares you know maybe moving forward bit of a development player but really effective use of the January window and they've all you know the, the three guys I mentioned particularly have had a real impact and, and they've but, you know, put us where we are mm-hmm. and, and it's been so important. You'll have heard Ange being interviewed during the week uh, in the run-up to, to Livingston and that was his 50th game, I believe, yeah. uh, in charge of the club. And as you say, Paddy, we've put in such a, you know, an effort this season and it's been such a, you know, a good show and so far. It almost feels like two seasons in one, doesn't it? It feels yeah. like such a long time ago, you know, those pre-season friendlies in Wales, Muff, and uh, the game against Hearts where John Souter scoring the winner and, you know, Mitchelland. They feel like such a long time ago. They do, and it's it's just a an incredible turnaround. You know, we relied on our, our younger players quite a bit at the very beginning of the season. The, uh, the likes of um, Welsh, uh, young Dame Murray, um, Montgomery, Owen Moffat. aye, Owen Moffat. I haven't. Even, like, I mean, that's showing you where we're actually where at. And I've Joey s- Dawson, yeah, I've all said, these guys. I've said countlessly on this this show that that's not um, for me. That's not the not any manager's fault. That's the board's fault. Um, and they need to learn from this. Uh, it's a constant reminder. I think it's kind of pretty much the old regime um, still in place. So they need to remember that this just can't happen again. We yeah. can't be in that position. Having said that, they've realised the mistake they've made. They've put the money out onto players. And I still think that we will strengthen in the summer. Mm-hmm. But it's still a massive schoolboy error from them. Yeah. I think it's the first time since Anil that a manager's been properly backed. Um, you know, Strachan was back to a degree, but that was after he had called the squad of experienced players that were on big contracts mm-hmm. for the annual era so that, that that was incrementally done over time rather than just you know January is the first time where I can really remember say, right, who do you want let's go out and get them yeah. we've got them we've brought them in and, and the job's been done so um, it just shows when you get when you get the right man in, in place and the board back them it, it brings that unity to the whole club yeah. And you, you can see that it really does feel like everybody's pulling in the same direction this year. Yeah, Paddy, you've mentioned that you you know you're quite sure we'll strengthen the summer. Mm-hmm. I think one hundred percent. I think this is not even the half of what Ange wants to no. achieve, and I think we're very soon going to see Ange version two point in terms of just stepping up to another level because we know we're in a very good position domestically, and you know all going well, we'll, we'll go and you know prove that in the remaining weeks of the season. But we've still got a, a real step up to go, and Bodo Glimt gave us a sharp reminder of that. Yeah. There's still a way to go in terms of you know where we want to be 
uh, in Europe and beyond. So we'll see how that all plays out. Muff, uh, we'll take a quick glance at the, the next few fixtures pre-split. So obviously we've got Dundee United, first of all, that's the Scottish Cup. That's on the Monday. Did you get a ticket, Paddy? Nothing yet, but I'm trying. Um, trying. They, they've been in short supply because uh, I think our boss only got two. And United have taken the shed for this game, shed, I, which I'd be surprised if they sell out. No yeah. offence, United, but... We'll see. Um, so we've got Dundee United Scottish Cup uh, a week on Monday, 14th of March. Then it is the three pre-split games. So we've got Ross County at home, Saturday 19th of March. Rangers uh, away, Sunday 3rd of April. And then St. Johnson at home on Saturday 9th of April. There's a few wee testers on there as well, Matt. There's Nothing's going to be easy at this stage in the season. No, Ross County in good form. Uh, United have proved a stubborn opponent already this season. So, um, no, and then obviously going, going to Ibrox is, a, is, is the biggie. So, this is this is it. This is the, the the time of the season where the games really really matter because mm. if you make a mistake or you lose a game, you've not got a lot of time to call it back. Yeah, I mean every point's a prisoner, Paddy, and that's yeah. that's for all teams that you know. There's such you'll have seen the the league table, table, I'm sure, but there's only one point separating fourth and eighth. So at the moment, the top six, you know, is looking like uh, Celtic Rangers, Hearts, Hibs, Levy, and Ross County. That can change very quickly in one round of fixtures. So it, it's all up in the air as to who will face post split. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, and you know we, we, we've been kind of talking about how many Celtic uh, games do we get at home in the split, or how many do we get away. End of the day, we're just we're, we're still kind of doing this thing where we're taking it one game at a time, and I I don't think obviously you want the, the home the home fixture, of course, uh, you want more than what uh, than, than the away ones, but I still don't think it phases Ange in any way in that sense. I think uh, he'll take whatever whatever they're given and, and just make sure that they just go and get the job done yeah. uh, having said that obviously yeah it's going to be interesting to see who we do come up against in this but it's, it's been actually a pretty good season in the league so far and, and there's still even a fight for relegation as well so the games against the game against St Johnston's a difficult one at Celtic Park but as will it be for Rangers going to Dens Park as well because yeah. that, these are games that yes they're not banked to go and get anything but they'll, they'll, they'll bite their hand off or anything so they could set up for the draw you know so yeah. I think everybody, everybody in the whole league, apart from Hearts, <laughs> are fighting for something. Hearts have absolutely cemented third place. Yeah. They can't finish second. They'll re really need to make a mess it to finish fourth. So they'll just sail, sail along in third. Every other team is scrapping for something, whether it's European places or top six or getting clear of relegation or whatever. So there's no gummies, Muff. No, there isn't any gimmies and it's, it's, it's quite funny that about, about Hearts who would have thought that they would have been the ones just sitting pretty and, I know. you know, <laughs> not effectively nothing to play for um, No, it, it's just a critical time and I think this is where our, well, hopefully our squad depth will really play its part You know, we've already referenced the fact that so many players seem interchangeable mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and I, I just think that helps Also, I think psychologically playing before Rangers look Paddy reference as well is, is a big thing you can go there and you can set your marker but having two of those three games at home I think also helps you know it's, it's a key like yeah. the Ross County game yeah. and the St John's game Johnson, so yeah I'm, like you say I'm in Ross County's forum for probably about been out January they've, incredible. Been, they've been excellent so um, that'll, that'll be a tough game but yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to it just because I, I didn't think it would it would be like this at the start right. of the season but as, as the season went on you could maybe tell it's got to be a bit closer than people thought but for us to be in pole position at this stage effectively four points with the goal difference it's, it's a great place to be yeah, a, sure a question for you is would you take uh, the boy Charles Cook for us yes. County he was in my mind there ah, yes. yes I mean he's had a great season you see the way he gets in between the defenders I, he's rapid as well I, I did actually I'm honestly not just saying this I said that to the boy sitting next to the game when we played against him at home he, he, he always causes us a problem aye, even, aye, even, aye. In, even when we've been you know, comfortably beating them. He always looks like he's got to beat his man. He's, twi he's twenty five now, but I still think I, I'd I'd give him a wee punt and see how he gets on. I just think you kind of look at what, what obviously we lost um, all of our strikers at one point, and then Maeda just come in. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, maybe the kind of player just floats about in the background. I don't know. Or, or, or does he come and make an impact? Given that the Dumbelli and Doak both look look like they could be mm -hmm. on yeah. their way in the summer, I, I don't think you're losing anything by bringing him in. No. he's not going to cost you a lot of money. No, you know that's the thing. And he's, he's pro is he still top scorer in the league? Nah, I think so. Aye. There aye. or thereabouts. Anyway, um, we'll get a good look at him in a couple of weeks' time as aye. well. So yeah, definitely want to uh, pay attention. To you. Paddy, we also have this luxury of I think it's an eight day break between the Livingston game and the Dundee United game. Not sure if we've out with international breaks had that kind of spell you know at any point during the season so it is a great opportunity for Ange to 
work with the players and, you know, maybe focus on some more kind of set-piece stuff mm-hmm. and things of that nature. Always gives a chance to, you know, rest and recuperate some of the, the other guys as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're right. Um, other than international stuff. And now, with there being nothing on there, he's going to, get, he's going to have the full team together for the next, what, five, seven, eight days before, um, sorry, seven days before Tanadice next week. I think it's huge for us just again, just looking at the, the fixtures coming up before the split, just to get the team ready, mentally prepared. And we're still pushing for the, a treble here as well. Um, and I don't think Ange will forget that. I don't think it's all about the league this season. Um, we want to go and do that as well, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And what a statement it would be if we did. Oh, oh, big, you big, need to Paddy, eat. big Paddy still wanting this treble. Absolutely. I wanted the quadruple, but I never got <laughs> it. So, um, no, but you, you need to look at it that way. And, and we've got the depth to do it. That's that's the thing. That's yeah. the difference from maybe where we were all sitting, giving our predictions uh, at the beginning of last season. Mm-hmm. Um Rotation is key in his type of team. When we were talking about, obviously, what he has, he has that core. Um, he's not probably going to move about too much, but the the tempo in which we want to play, we don't, we've not been playing it week in, week out lately, but the tempo in which we want to play does require rotation, and I think we've got plenty. And we've got players coming back as well, hopefully as well. So yeah. I don't think we're, the sounds of it, Turnbull or Kyogo, will be too too long ago. You might see them back end of the month, beginning of April, which would be great for us as well, getting into this push. Yeah. Matthew, you've got a dream big. No, I know, I know. Um, I'm forgetting Paddy's quadruple dream. <laughs> I forgot about that for a minute. There. Yeah. There is a huge, listen, it wasn't by choice, but there's a huge silver line in the fact that we don't have Europe, you know, this week. Yeah. Obviously, Rangers have got a couple of tough fixtures and that's, that's part and parcel of, you know, competing in Europe. We would like to have been there, we're not. And actually, it's going to be a real benefit for us to spend that time with the players over the next week or so. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd, I'd still like to have been in been in Europe, but uh, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it could coincidentally end up giving us a, a slight advantage with the fact that we're playing first. So, uh, listen, as what it is. Like, Ange seems to have a huge focus on on the time that he spends with the, the team in the training ground. I know that might sound like a strange thing to say for a man that's employed to train a football team but <laughs> as we know not not every not necessarily every manager Aye. does take that um, that attention to detail on the training pitch but Ange does and so therefore you can only think the team's got to benefit with a bit more time with them yeah I think so um, Paddy you quoted John McGinley on Twitter and there's another thing that I've seen John tweeted out um, in the last couple of days having played 11 games over the last five weeks which is you know hell of a run we've now got just four games in our next five weeks He's going to start charging us for this, I know, by the way. That's okay, I'll, I'll, I'll strike a deal with John. Um, but it's, it's just really interesting yeah. in terms of how relentless it's been. But I say now, at the business end of the season, there's a wee bit of breathing room. Oh, thank God, man, it's heart attack material. You're, 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 man, you're living in your nerves. I think yeah. he's talking about the players, but I know what you mean. Ah, no, no, I'm talking about, I'm talking about us, man. <laughs> but you, always, you always make it about yourself. Through the mill, through the mill. Yeah, but also, as you kind of briefly mentioned, Paddy, it may give us a wee chance to get the likes of Turnbull Hopefully, Kyogo, I, I would love to see the wee man back in Aye. action. Um, and maybe the likes of Julian, Dembele, you know, you might see a wee bit more of them just over the next few weeks. He needs to get back soon because I'm saving the t-shirt for when he's back. <laughs> Miff has got a wonderful t-shirt to... Uh, no, no, don't get, no, don't get away. That's fine. Don't get All away. will be revealed once <laughs> Kyogo returns. Uh, Miff, you missed this section of the show last week, but we now wrap things up by asking uh, yourself and the lads for one good and one bad thing from Celtic World right now. What I'll do, I'll give you a wee moment to think about it, and I'll come to Paddy first. So Paddy, what you got this week? So one good is, just kind of what we've been speaking about, we're moving in just to this wee, wee spot where we've, we've got a bit more time for the players to kind of relax. Us as fans can relax a wee bit as well, um, and just, you know, kind of learn more from what I just want to implement. Uh, one bad, I've... Me and the boys have been taking almost heart attacks when we're kind of getting a really, really good lead in some games and, and just Joe Hart just needs to calm down with his distribution. Like, just slow it down, mate. Please, it's giving me a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that, that's on instruction, though, from Andrew? Is it a wee bit of his own enthusiasm? I remember uh, reading something about it, apparently under Guardiola. Guardiola was talking about the best time to obviously just attack is after you've scored and you should never switch off. You should be as urgent as you were. And I think he's kind of still implementing something along those lines. But... Nah, that, like games like yesterday, you're full. You're full of eleven players need to be on the mm. ball like that, and I, I didn't see as like that at any point. Um, he just needs to calm down. It's like a hot tatty sometimes, mate. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm all for uh, Pep Guardiola's instructions filtering their way through our squad, but you seen better than Ange. No, it's not. It's not, <laughs> not that level yet. Similar. Yeah. Uh, what about yourself, my one good, one bad, one good. Um, well, the, the good being the level of performance. I know it's something I hark on about pretty much weekly but it's a very important thing to me to know yeah and, a lot to you. and to leave the ground yesterday 
just absolutely buzzing it. Every player mm-hmm. playing their part was just <clears throat> magnificent. And that is the one good thing about Celtic this week, you know. Not just the three points, but the level of performance. Are you giving me one bad? One bad. You don't need to. You don't need to have it. But to be honest, honest, no, no. The, the guilt by association of this uh, Ange Cup, <laughs> we, we Rangers, you know, I don't, I think we've created a kerfuffle here where there didn't Aye. really need to be one. The Ange Homecoming and, trophy. Uh, the Ange Homecoming, or as one of my friends called it, the Mate Cup. Mate Cup. Mate. Yeah. Mate. Mate. Not having that at all. Mate. I think it's unnecessary. However, I do, I do contend that we should make a fuss of Ange. Yeah, I've no issue with that. There's other ways but to do could, it. Though. We could have bought my new pair of grey trousers. You know, we have done so. something along those lines. <laughs> yeah, I mean, others will argue there's a lot of dough at stake. You know, and I believe Celtic get well, it. Well, listen, in. if there's if there's the figures quoted, was it six and a half million? I think so. Yeah. You know, I'll buy you Chris in, in the law, I've got in the law well days he'd have rode a boat out to Australia <laughs> um, to get his six and a half million you know big Pedro and, and it was uh, Gant Speedos on right. but uh, no I, I, you know it's listen it's it's the way it is it's commerciality isn't it yeah, it is where do you stand on it Paddy just very briefly um, if the negotiations have been done correctly and from what I'm hearing that Celtic have kind of been approached first for this and signed up to it for the money that we're getting and then they've been allowed to come and pay tribute then I'm sitting okay on it, right? But I can understand as a fan base where we're standing. Aye, it's uh, it's not a friendly game for a start, so no. no. That, that's that's a bit for me. It's a prestige yeah. game. It's not a friendly game. Paddy, you've got good contacts. You get tickets for those ones. I have, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I've tested the watch too many times this season with travelling. I have no chance I'm going to Australia. Fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. So after a relentless run of fixtures, Ange and the players can now take a short but welcome break before the challenge of Dundee United in the Scottish Cup next Monday night. For most fans, it's all about the league this season, but a cup final to look forward to and the hand in sunshine would be a nice wee bonus to throw into the mix. Thanks to Miff and Paddy for joining me today and our thanks to you for continuing to follow and support the Celtic Exchange. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like this episode and subscribe to the channel. And if you're listening to the podcast version, please give us a five-star review wherever possible. It makes a big difference and is really appreciated by everyone here on the team. But in the meantime, and as always, thanks for tuning in.